Okay, guys, um, we're there. Welcome to Coffee Talk, where we can let people slowly roll in as we um, continue with our intros and whatnot, but check out the chat box for opportunities and for the agenda here of everything we're going to be talking about this morning about the airport. Um, I do want to welcome our two guests this morning, James Martin and Holly Hayden. Thank you so much for joining us. This is such a huge opportunity for our city, and we're so excited to be able to partner with you guys on this info session and be able to help out some artists and answer some important questions they have. Um, just quick little intros here. Uh, James Martin is the Public Art Administrator, General Services Department, Facilities and Architecture Division for the KCMO 1% for the Art Program. The Public Art Administrator oversees public art commissions related to city construction projects and coordinates the Municipal Art Commission's role in city public art and building projects. Martin has worked in curatorial and administrative roles in many of Kansas City's art institutions, including a short stint as the acting director of KCAC in 1989. I did not know that, that's so funny. And then he holds a master's degree in art history. Welcome James, thanks for joining. Thank you, thanks for having us. Yes, definitely. And also Holly Hayden is with us this morning. Holly is the consulting artist for the new single terminal and parking at KCA. KCI, Project and Executive Director of Psych Style Industries. Holly is an alumna of the Kansas City Art Institute and has been a part of the arts and design scene in Kansas City for over 20 years. After starting a design company with fellow graduates, she continued her freelance design career paired with event coordination and arts consulting. Holly works with clients ranging from local artisans to fashion designers, television personalities, sports teams, touring bands, galleries, real estate developers, national brands, and civic projects. She currently serves as the Vice President of Finance for AIGA KC and longtime member of the Ethnic Enrichment Commission of Kansas City. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for having us. Good to have you. Definitely. And um, yeah, we'll slowly let people roll in, but I'm going to throw it to Holly and James and let you guys take it from here. Um, like I said, if you have questions during their presentation, please put them in the chat box and then we'll address all the Q&A at the end of their presentation. Yeah. Thanks, Jessica. Definitely, welcome. So um, we wanted to kick off, first of all, just with a quick uh, recap of what the 1% for Art program is. Um, I know some of you are already familiar with it, uh, but others might not be. Um, it's a program that started in 1986 and so it's been around for a while. And um, <clears throat> the, the, the program sets aside 1% of the construction costs for public buildings for adornment with art. Uh, so it's 1% of the vertical construction costs. So everything that's above ground, um, any costs that are additional to that, like, um, site acquisition or demolition are not figured into the, what makes up the 1%. So we've got 1% of the above ground vertical construction at KCI, for example, and that um, yielded a, a public art budget of just over five and a half million dollars. Uh, so um, last spring, we uh, went through a series of meetings with a consultant and with project advisory artists to help define where public art should appear at the airport and how much of that five and a half million dollar budget should be dedicated to each portion of, of the uh, terminal. <clears throat> um, so this is uh, what we came up with. And so this was a public process with input by artists uh, that helped us to determine uh, these budget amounts and the areas. Um, so let's see, what else can I tell you? There's um, the selection process is a committee driven process. We'll get into that a, a little more in depth as we move forward. Um, when it comes to that committee process, I'm a non-voting member. I'm the coordinator of the process and uh, the, the process involves members from the community as well as members of the Municipal Art Commission. So the Municipal Art Commission is a group of appointees by the mayor 
that uh, is authorized to approve works of art that are being placed on city owned property and also uh, has authorization for the movement of art or the removal of art. And the, uh, the Municipal Art Commission uh, is a charter organization of the city, which means that it's been in existence since 1926. And so the city of Kansas City, Missouri has been involved with public art for nearly a hundred years uh, in one form or another, although the, uh, the more formal 1% for art program, as I mentioned, started in the, in the late 1980s. And we now have uh, close to 50 works of art in the 1% for art program that are scattered around the city. Uh, so with that, uh, that's your basic introduction to the 1% for art program. I will turn it over to Holly at this point. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having us. Um, I'll point out a couple of housekeeping things too, just like Jessica said. If everyone can keep their um, audio on mute throughout our presentation, just so everyone can hear. Also, I wanted to just state out loud, we are recording this today and we'll actually post this on buildkci.com slash art. So you can go back and rewatch this. So you don't have to take um, all of the notes today if you just wanna go back and rewatch it. We'll make that available for you. And like James said, talking about the project very quickly as an overview, um, a lot of you have probably been following along. It's been um, many years that we've had different community meetings and talked about the project. We've also issued eight art locations already for call for artists. And that are these right here, and they're all closed. So we're at the last portion of the 1% for art rollout. So if you hear us say rollout, rollout one, rollout two, rollout three, we're talking about when those calls for artists were released. So yeah, looking over at the main map, and we call this the heat map. So this is what James was referring to. If we did a lot of research with consultants and project advisory artists and local community members to come up with where in this footprint for the new terminal and parking would be the most appropriate places for art to be located. So we found essentially 10 locations. With that 10th location there, we found an additional 19 locations. So we really want art to be a big component um, for this project. So if we talk about uh, this I shape or this H shape, um, I'm sure some of you have seen this in other presentations. That's the terminal that we're talking about is this area here. And then right across the, the street, the Arrivals Roadway and the Parchers Roadway, there's the garage. So when we're talking about the project, um, I know sometimes you hear new airport. Um, it's same airport, new terminal, new parking. So same location. So you can see where the other terminal used to be right here. It's sort of cut off in the diagram. So I'll be toggling back and forth between a couple of different share screens so you can follow along. Let's see. One main thing that I want everyone to kind of keep in mind is, and you'll hear it quite often throughout our presentation, is buildkci.com slash art. This is where all of the information that we're gonna talk about today will be located. If you can't remember when a date is, if you can't remember when a due date is, or, oh, I wanna go back and see what you've done on the timeline, I wanna watch a recorded video, all of those things will be located on this website. So we update it often. So I'll scroll down a little bit so you can see. There's all kinds of things from FAQs that's frequently asked questions that we're getting throughout the process. You can scroll through there. There's links so you can find out more with any of those answers. There's a Facebook group. If you haven't joined that, right here's the link. So yeah, that's specifically just to talk about art at the new terminal and parking. And a lot of other questions and answers. Anything that you may um, need more information about, we've added those links there. So I'm sure you've seen uh, the call for artists that's out and reviewed that. The very, very first thing, we put it first so it's easy to find, the call for artists. Click for more information. And you're all here today, so you probably registered for the artist information session. That's right here as well. And we'll have three more of these sessions. We'll talk about this more at the end as well. Um, if you want to learn more information, or have a little bit of a deeper dive into how to register for city paperwork, how to register your business, uh, all of those things. So that will be part of our next artist information sessions. So right here is concourse A and B RFP. That's the call for artists we'll be talking about today. 
can click on here. And this goes directly to the call for entry. So we'll come back to that. Let me go back. So first we'll expand a little bit more on what James started about the 1%. So what is that 1%? What does that mean for this project? And how does that relate to you as the artist that will be applying to this? So it's a little bit different since this is a city project. So the process is really outlined. So right here, kcmo.gov slash art. And yeah, James, I, um, I'll share screen if you wanna talk through what we can find it on this website. Sure, yeah, so uh, this is on the city's website and it's um, a quick uh, uh, introduction to those things that I've already said, how long Kansas City has been involved with public art, um, what's, what's the, the law <clears throat> behind the, the funding of, of the program, um, <clears throat> what's the nature of the program. Um, we have a, uh, a, a new funding source for public art that um, has been in place since 2017. Um, bonds were passed and uh, that, uh, those, that program has made public art available to street um, projects and uh, roads and bridges as well. So now we put public art not only uh, in buildings, but also with street projects. <clears throat> so uh, on the tab that Holly's on now, the 1% for Art Program tab, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a, a variety of links there. Um, how to apply for 1% for Art Project, um, more, you know, kind of a link for the KCI related public art project, how we select public art, and then uh, typical requirements for KCMO contracts. So those artists that ultimately get selected as a finalist have uh, a number of uh, processes to go through, uh, quite a bit of paperwork, uh, that things like ensuring that you are registered with the Missouri Secretary of State, ensuring that you have adequate insurance, uh, ensuring that you have a business license to do business in the city of Kansas City, Missouri, those sorts of things are going to be required of uh, uh, the finalist artists, those that are selected. I will point out that um, if you want to keep up to date about all of our public art opportunities, you can go to kcmo.gov subscribe, which Holly is uh, pointing out with her cursor now. There's a, uh, a link there for public art opportunities. You just enter your email address and you will automatically receive all of our calls for artists. Um, so we've mentioned callforentry.org a little bit already. Um, what we know as CAFE, that's the city's official uh, artist submission tool that we um, use. And uh, Holly, we, are we ready to go into some detail with CAFE? We yet? can, yeah. So that would be the very, very first step of before even applying to this is making sure that you have a callforentry.org profile set up as an artist. And it's a free service to set that up. And that would be where you can keep images of your portfolio. You can upload your resume. That's where you'll up upload your letter of interest. So that's a program to make all of the applications um, identical when they get sent to uh, James's office for us to review them. So that's the easiest way. So we'll keep a reminder out too, don't email us your applications directly. Definitely send them through call for entry. That's how they'll actually get reviewed. So yeah, I can click on here. And a lot of you may be familiar with this. If not, we'll briefly walk through it. It's really self-explanatory and their, self, their uh, help desk is incredibly helpful. So I'll pretend here I'm an artist logging in. All you need is switch screens. Oh, oh, there we go. Yep, got to toggle out. I'll have to share, stop, share, reshare when it gives me a new window. So I'll go to login. I already have an account, so I'll log in. I'm an artist. So welcome here. 
So if you get to call for entry and you're like, well, how do I find build KCI? I can either search for it or remember buildkci.com. Let me show you this back here. Apologies, takes me a second. Long chair. Here we go. So from buildkci.com slash art, there's that direct link that says the call for entry. You click on that and it will go directly to cafe to the RFP right here. So we can go through this a little bit, just um, talking about expectations, talking about how to apply, um, all of those things. So James, I can kind of drive if you want to talk about it. Yeah, sure. So um, you see the, the button that says apply now. Uh, once you have a profile set up, that, that's how you will uh, actually um, uh, provide the information that we're asking you to provide. So we're asking for a letter of interest and, pro and proposal description. Uh, so this is a local call for artists. We're using all the counties that Kansas City International Airport calls their catchment area. It's, the, it's where most of their travelers come from. And so um, we've allowed for, I think it's 21 counties. <clears throat> and those artists who live outside of those counties, but who can demonstrate significant ties to Kansas City or to the airport are also considered for eligibility. And you need to place that in your letter of interest. Uh, so um, in the letter of interest, we ask you for your county of residence or for your, uh, your ties to Kansas City. Um, we also ask for you to, to describe if you're interested in the project and describe your artwork proposal. So um, this, the art for the concourses is, is uh, we're, we're, being, we're selecting the art for the concourses in a slightly different process then we have the other eight works of art. So let's uh, go back to that and not get ahead of <clears> ourselves. We'll come back to okay. the exact what we're asking for. Let's talk about the actual project eligibility and what we're asking yeah. for okay. for the commission. And then we'll come back. Yeah, just so we don't um, jump ahead. So right. same thing um, James was just talking about was eligibility. So that's the very first thing that's listed um, in here. And we had a lot of questions. Um, people sent in some email questions to me as well. We'll talk about that at the end. But one question that kept coming up was, I am fill in the blank, do I qualify? So if I don't live in Kansas City, if, um, oh, I went to the Art Institute, but now I live in another state. So just like James said, if you can demonstrate that there's ties to you or your artwork to Kansas City, that's completely appropriate. Just let us know in your letter of interest so the selection panel knows that. Um, so that's the very first part. Uh, we had one other question about um, city employees. And James, I know um, you can probably talk a little bit more about that right here of who is not eligible if you are a city employee. Um, right. So full-time City of Kansas City, Missouri employees and those that are um, on contracts with the, the KCI project are uh, not eligible to apply. Um, so um, to to get on to the, to the concourse areas, we're talking about art that's going to hang on walls. And that's what this commission description portion uh, describes. So we're talking about things like traditionally framed drawings, paintings, photography, textiles, mosaic, uh, or tile wall hangings, mixed media. I mean, it could even be digital work, um, could be sculptural work. Uh, the key is that it can only be four inches deep, and that's due to ADA regulations, Americans with Disabilities Act regulations. Um, we're going to be using a uh, picture rail system to hang the works, uh, using uh, cable from a picture rail. 
Um, we do expect you uh, to use um, materials that are as archival as, as uh, possible. Uh, and, and they would also be, your, your work would be framed with UV resistant plexiglass. And we had a couple of questions about that too, about specific artwork. We realize everyone's art is a little different in the way that it may be framed or the way that it may be presented. Um, these are our best practices of what, when we're talking about artwork that needs to have that longevity. So one thing, the very first part of this is we're commissioning new artworks. These are, these are brand new artworks that you would create for a specific location in the concourses at the new terminal. So this is a purchase of your artwork. So this isn't a temporary show. This isn't um, a rotating gallery. This will be a piece of artwork that will be in the permanent collection at the airport. So um, that, just to clarify, I know I had some questions about that. Um, so the, with that being said, we want the artwork to last as long as possible and knowing how many thousands and thousands of travelers will be in the locations um, from when it opens, you know, 50 years from now, uh, we have to make sure that your work is protected. So if it's something that um, is a little more fragile or something that may fade, um, again, we'll show uh, visuals right after this so you can actually uh, see the space and understand where your artwork would be hanging. Uh, there'll be things like sunlight, airflow, a lot of travelers, a lot of um, motion in that area. They won't be protected by something like glass or a velvet rope like a museum may. They may get touched. So we just want to make sure that your artwork will be the most long lasting as possible. Uh, so the concourses are the so-called gate lounges. And so that's where people are leaving and where they're arriving. So it's um, first impression for those folks that are arriving in Kansas City for the first time. Um, it's also a way to uh, send people off with a reminder of their home if they're, if they're flying out somewhere or with a reminder of Kansas City if, if they're returning to their home elsewhere. <clears throat> uh, there is quite a bit of glass, <clears throat> and, uh, which is another reason we ask for those archival materials. Um, you can read the background about the project um, a little more. We won't get into all that. That's on uh, buildkci.com slash art as well. Um, you can watch presentations we've shown in the past. You can read about the past uh, call for entries that we've sent out as well to get a little more of an overview. And again, we'll show some uh, visuals for you here next. So budget for these locations. It's 19 wall locations, which means 19 different artists will be awarded uh, within this call for artists. So each one of these locations will be $20,000 each. So that's a, an overview of just the budget and how many. And um, just looking at our call for artists so far, we've received over 1,700 applications for the past calls for artists. So this is a very competitive process. Um, that's very exciting. Um, we like all of the interest and uh, we get to see so many cool portfolios. Um, but there's so many other opportunities in Kansas City as well that Jessica pointed out that are happening all year long. Um, if you don't get selected for this one, uh, don't get frustrated. This is very competitive. We can only choose 19 artists. Um, but definitely sign up to be on those subscribe lists to find out about more 1% projects that we're having um, and then other opportunities within Kansas City and the regional area. And now we can kind of get back into those specific submission materials and then I'll toggle back and forth uh, from a cafe page of where you upload those. If you wanna go through this, James. Yeah, so the letter of interest and proposal description, as I mentioned, you described your, your residency or your relationship to Kansas City. You wanna describe your interest in the project <clears throat> in, in the, uh, the new terminal construction project. If you have some experience in public art, design uh, and execution that's helpful. Um, we're looking for uh, the ability to um, work on this scale, on this scope, um, and, and work with uh, public uh, 
realm, the public realm in terms of having stakeholders with the airport who may uh, ask you to change things, quite honestly, uh, you know, as, as you move forward. And so you've got to be used to, to that and, and be willing to do that and um, be willing to compromise. That's a big part of public art. Um, your resume and CV will uh, list your professional experience. Um, you, you want to highlight any projects involving the community and work in the public sector. Your education, your experience working in organizations, institutions, etc. Um, we ask for three professional references. Now note that that's not a letter of reference. That's just a, le a reference contact information. So you don't actually have to get the letters quite yet. Um, images of past work. So um, on call for entry, there's a maximum of uh, 10 images or 10 artwork examples that you can upload. We're suggesting that you make about half of those images of your past work, images from your portfolio. Um, I, I would say half of those at minimum are past work. You can include more works from your past for your portfolio if you like. Um, one of the differences with this call for artists is that we're actually asking you for your ideas at this point. Um, we're asking you to go ahead and make us a proposal, a sketch, for how your work would fit into the uh, the space into the, the concourse areas. Um, so there are 19 walls. Each one of these walls has a standardized space to work within, and it's four feet high by 20 feet wide. So it's a very large rectangular space. If you make work that size and you want to propose a single work, that's great. If you make work that's much smaller than that, you'd probably want to propose multiple examples of your work. But each of the 19 spaces is envisioned as the work of a single artist. Now, if you have a collaborator that you work with to produce collaborative works, that can also be considered, of course. I uh, thought so, it would be good because it would show people's gardens, backyard gardens as well. Um, so we're suggesting uh, up to five examples of your idea, your proposal sketch, et cetera. And we'll explain that a little more when I go into the, uh, the area where you actually upload your proposal. There's two options for how you can show us your proposal. And James is talking about one of those options of uploading five individual images within your portfolio, and you can label them as your proposal images. And we'll get into that a little bit more as well. Okay, so getting into selection a little bit, how do we actually choose um, works of art in the public art program? There's a selection panel that's made up of uh, project stakeholders, in other words, people that work for the Kansas City Aviation Department. There are uh, local arts professionals on the selection panel. And there will also be um, art professionals from around the country uh, involved in this selection panel. So it's a hybrid panel. We have the folks in, uh, from outside the area to provide some outside perspective and also to um, introduce curators and public art administrators from other parts of the country to the high quality of work that we know that you all are making here in the Kansas City area. So there's a standard, um, there's a standard uh, set of evaluation uh, criteria, uh, excellence, relevant prior experience. So that's where your portfolio comes in. Uh, appropriateness to the site and to the project. So we're keeping in mind that this is not a specialized art venue. This is not a gallery or a museum. But this is a public venue where people did not necessarily come to look at art as their first priority for that day. 
And a little uh, bit expanding on that too, appropriateness to the site and the project. So if in your proposal, you propose something that was maybe a floor mounted sculpture, that would not be appropriate to the site because we're only asking for wall based artwork. So that's also what that means. Uh, durability. Um, that's again kind of reflecting what we were saying about archival materials and UV plexiglass. Um, you know, this is a public space, lots of traffic. So we've got to make sure that, that things are going to last as long as possible. Also diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so um, the Municipal Art Commission, which is the body that approves the uh, works of public art, uh, the Municipal Art Commission stated in a formal um, statement that they're seeking a diverse, equitable, and inclusive group of artists to produce public art for the new single terminal and parking at KCI. And so uh, you may want to address uh, your uh, perspective or experience uh, regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion in your letter of interest. Um, so in terms of the selection process, once we have all the submissions, the selection panels will have uh, about a month to get through everything. They'll do that on their own time. And then we will convene as a group to uh, confirm the 19 finalist artists. Those 19 finalist artists um, will then go into a process of um, entering into an agreement with the city of Kansas City. Oh yeah, thank you for the reminder, Holly, the, the uh, schedule. Um, so the deadline is, is June 18th. Um, we expect to notify the finalists by the end of August. So the judging will take place um, you know, in, in July and, and then the first, first part of August. Uh, let's see, where was I? Oh yes, the finalists will enter in, into an agreement with the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Um, any business that does business with the city of Kansas City, Missouri, regardless of what type of business it is, has a number of things that uh, are required. Uh, you have to be um, approved as a supplier for the city of Kansas City. So you have to be registered with the city. You have to have a business license. In other words, um, there are insurance requirements uh, and the insurance requirements are, it's the sort of thing that's in your best interest. Uh, so typically commercial auto insurance is uh, required of businesses. And that's so that, for example, if you were transporting something related to the art that you are work making for KCI and you're involved in an accident, the third party in that accident can, uh, they might be able to claim that you're working for the city. And uh, as a result, you know, the commercial auto insurance is, is preferred, is recommended. There have been cases where the city has waived the commercial auto insurance, in which case people provide their personal auto insurance, but that makes you personally more liable. Uh, so, you know, the other assets that are in your name can become liable in a situation like that, such as your home, for example, other property, and so that's why commercial auto insurance is highly preferred and recommended. Um, one of the other requirements is general liability insurance. Uh, that's a policy that um, covers all kinds of things related to owning a business. It costs about $500 a year typically. Um, it's something that the, the city typically requires. Um, artists have to be registered with the Secretary of State of Missouri. Now, keep in mind, these requirements are only for those artists that are finalist artists. You don't need to do any of this just to get on CAFE and apply. Everybody's welcome to apply. But once you're selected as a finalist, there are a number of uh, 
requirements that, that will be asked of you. So please keep that in mind. Yeah, we want to make sure everyone's aware of, of, like James said, what will be asked of you should you become a finalist for this project. And knowing the difference between um, a city project of the scale and what a 1% for art commission is versus some other uh, call for artists that you may have entered in or been awarded in the past or any sort of grant programming or anything like that, this is a very different um, set of rules that we have to follow and a set of processes. But all of those processes are outlined. And we've also set up a specific date, which is next Wednesday from 5.30 to 7.30. And Casey BizCare, so they're an office downtown um, that anyone can go and ask questions. If you have business uh, information that you need to uh, file or register for things there. They are helped and super helpful. Um, we will actually have Nia Richardson as our special guest that night, and she will walk through the entire process of every piece of paper you need to file, um, different things you need to consider, different insurances you may need to have, just so you have an overview of um, expectations moving forward. And I know it sounds like a lot. Um, definitely when we walk through this, um, it's not so scary um, when you have a checklist and they've created a, um, a checklist specifically for us and the 1% for art and then added a new page to their website as well. So we'll actually get to showcase that at the uh, info session next Wednesday. And should you not be able to attend live, again, we'll record that and post it on buildkci.com slash art for you to go back and watch. So that will be something that um, will be available to any artists. And if you want more information about that, feel free to reach out to us. Again, all of those links for registration are located on our website. Um, hey. Um, Holly, do we want to start addressing some questions or do we want to wait? Well, I, we haven't shown the visuals yet. I think the part everyone's waiting on is actually um, yeah. let's look at the location and what we're kind of talking about and where art would go, uh, what kind of proposal we would like to see. Let's yeah, I think once we get to the nitty gritty here, it will it'll answer a lot of the questions that have come up. Yeah. So let me share. So for each one of the call for artists, we've issued a little specifications packet, and this is just three pages. And when you click on the call for entry, uh, call for artists, all the information, there's a link right at the top that says download specs, and that would be this. So this is available for you as well. Um, I know this is probably a little bit small, not everyone can read this on their screen, but we'll go through it. So this is a rendering of the airport or of the new gate area in the terminal. So again, I'm going to be jumping back and forth, but we'll have a Q&A um, right after this to clarify a little bit. I want to go to another tab just to show the outside. If you haven't seen some of the other renderings of the terminal itself or of the parking garage, I just want to reference some of those so you know what we're talking about. So right here, when we talk about the entrance, this will be the new entrance to the new terminal. So it has some natural elements, some steel elements, I'll click through this just really quickly, just so you can see renderings. Again, there's that heat map and here's all of the locations of where we've notated where art should go. Here's some renderings of the inside, just so you can get a feel for some of the materiality and how much light there is in the entire space as we're moving through the space, then we'll focus on the concourse area of where we're asking for you all to propose artwork to go. And these were from our past call for entries. So I won't go through any of the specs here. I just want you to see some of the visuals. Again, rendering, seeing all this natural light, the connector, most of the areas that would be walls, more or less, of the perimeter of the terminal are all glass. So that indoor, outdoor, having that natural light coming in, even the parking garage has glass. So it all has that same feel to it. And so in thinking about wall-based works, the concourses were really the only options for anything based on the wall. Uh, and that's why the other areas of the airport are really very much sculpturally based. Mm -hmm. And I got asked a lot of questions about murals. Um, everybody said, where's a big wall we can do a mural? Most of the walls are glass. So that's exactly why um, just a smaller wall-based uh, painting uh, would be more appropriate than anywhere that a mural might fit. 
those pictures again. There's natural elements, the natural limestone wall back here retail area, again, natural light in many different locations. You can see this. So as you're walking through the space, this is the feeling that you would get on your way to the gates through the connector. Now I'm going through this fast. Baggage claim. So you've gotten your ticket, you've walked through the concourses and you're waiting at the gate. So here, a little bit of a rendering. Um, in here we're talking about structural provisions. These walls here, you see this gray back here, it's a little hard to see. Here we go. These red marks here are pointing out where all of those walls are. So if I zoomed in, each one of these areas is where there'll be seating, there'll be the gate queuing, um, there may be um, additional kiosks elsewhere, there'll be uh, airline information desks. So this is where all of those things will exist. So your artwork on a wall, we've pointed out the four foot by 20 foot area. So below this, that may be where chairs are, where people will be sitting at those gate lounges or in certain locations that may be where uh, travelers are queuing up to then go onto the plane. So in these areas, you can see that. So whichever airline you would be at, whichever gate you are going to, they're essentially all identical, but we've made certain areas that will have uh, outlets and also areas that have a little bit more um, structure to it should your piece require a little bit more uh, weight load and that, all of those things, if you can describe those in your letter of interest, again, everyone's artwork and their medium is just a little bit different. So the more information you can talk about your art practice and your artwork you want to propose, that will help the selection panel really understand your vision and how that fits into these spaces. So, so again, just, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, go back if you would, Holly. Sure. So just to kind of punctuate that. So the, the space to work with is five feet off the floor. Uh, to allow chairs, et cetera. Um, it's four feet tall, 20 feet wide. And within that space, like James says, you don't have to do a painting that's four feet by 20 foot. If your work is smaller or you have a diptych, you have a triptych, you have a couple of different artworks that would fit in that space, that's fine. You don't have to fill up every square inch of that space. Um, we'll be using a picture rail system to hang them so yeah, there was oh go ahead there was a question about other types of hanging too and and um we do envision most of most of the works to be hung on the picture rail the if there's a digital work that requires a video screen we actually have uh, i think it's is it two areas holly that have power yeah, there'll be a couple of different areas that have, uh, this is a kind of an overall diagram that we're putting outlets up above so the outlets aren't near the floor. So if you do have a piece that needs plugged in, needs electrical, needs power, you can actually hide that plug behind the artwork itself. The, there won't be an extension cord going from your artwork to the floor plugged in an outlet. We definitely want to make sure those walls look um, clean. It does have that a gallery feel, even though this is not a gal a traditional gallery setting at all. And so um, in that example, a video screen is not gonna hang from a picture wire, of course. So um, we envision most everything hanging by picture wire except video screens. Um, Holly, how many of the walls have been backed, do we? Can you recall? There's three locations that we've pointed out. Um, again, these walls aren't finished. They're not built yet. So all of these are renderings. As we get the actual pictures, um, those get posted on buildkci.com um, also as updates. But yeah, there'll be uh, multiple locations. Say you do have an art piece that does span that 20 feet that may require a cleat system on the back just for stability. That's okay. We have some spaces where that will be um, appropriate to place those artworks. Yeah, so we've got three areas that could in theory hold a heavier work. For the picture rail system, we've set a uh, maximum weight for 75 pounds. Um, per um, 
hanging or per point load. So if yeah. yours was a little over 75 pounds, you would have to have two, two or three point loads just to make sure that weight's distributed. Um, yeah, so, so there've been a few questions about the picture rail. Yeah, that, that really is how it's going to hang. We, we simply, uh, you know, we've got to have something that's um, uh, flexible. We've got to have something that's, um, you know, kind of modular and, and easy to move around if we need to. Uh, so that's what we envision most of the work hanging from. And here's and, the, yeah, this yeah is part of that, I, I think I completely skipped over it. It's a little hard to see in this drawing where you can see these darker gray areas. That's where the walls are. Why we're choosing the picture rail system and we can't simply just hang a, a hammer and nail in the wall. Those are large format tile. So it will have a very sleek look behind everything on the walls, um, easy to wipe down. So this isn't, these aren't just drywall walls or uh, typical gallery walls. Again, we wanna make it really clear this isn't a typical gallery setting. So um, all the requirements and all the specs are gonna be quite different. So we've outlined those here. And again, each, uh, you may have a lot of questions just about your specific artwork, if it falls in line with these, and we're more than happy to answer those questions. Yeah, can, yeah, go ahead to that image. That's a good image. Yeah, uh, so Jane, this- Just real quick for a time check. We're at yeah. about 10 minutes um, to the hour mark. So I don't know where you guys are at with your, your presentation. And I definitely don't want to um, restrict that. But I also do want to give time for folks to ask questions that maybe have to stick to this one hour time line. I think you guys have done a really good job of answering the questions thus far that have been in the-, the um, chat box around insurance, the walls especially have been a real question around weight. Um, I think some of the more specific questions around the weight of um, one thing that I want to make sure is <sighs> there was a question about the 75 pound limit. Is that per piece or for the entire 20 foot space? It's per point load. Okay. Okay. So that might help some folks um, too. So I, I just, do, like I said, I don't want to cut your presentation short, but I want to make sure that people, if they have questions, can ask them too. Yeah, yeah we're right at the end of the visuals. Perfect. So um, yeah, we'll just kind of talk just a little bit more about just our expectation for the proposals, and then we'll open it up to Q&A. Let me ask or answer one question real quickly about our artists uh, hanging the work themselves. No, you're not. Um, it'll be a delivery process and and we will provide the labor to do the hanging uh, so yeah go ahead and say that say more about the proposal process Holly. yeah so we've provided these renderings for the areas and if you can see right here on my cursor this is that exact area we're talking about so there may be seating underneath uh, there may be there may be not but the requirements are still the same so your art would be hanging up here so you're right at eye level for travelers. So this is really exciting that you were going to have our local arts community in 19 locations, everywhere where travelers are sitting and waiting for gates, they'll get to really interact with your piece on that eye level scale. So think about that as well. So it's not artwork that's going to be far away from somebody. It's going to be looked at right there um, in your proposal. Um, any of these renderings you can use to mock up your work on. Um, if you like, and if you want um, these sent to you individually, we can definitely provide that. There's a question um, about higher resolution diagrams, um, where those might be available, Holly. Um, as far as diagrams like this or uh, other spec sheets? I think probably the last image that you have up. We can send those out. I can add another link on um, within the uh, call for buildkci.com slash art. I can put another little link that has these individually so you can download them. And I have everyone's email that registered today, if you did register, and I'll send out um, a follow-up email after this meeting with the things that we talk about today. And we will also update the FAQs on the page so you can go back and see how everything's answered. Um, and I can't see the chat while I'm sharing. So if you could read questions out loud, um, I'm more than happy to help answer those. Yeah, there's a question about, will the artwork be protected by plexiglass? Yes, that's, that's part of the artist's budget to provide uh, the framing and the plexiglass. And it's UV resistant. Will and labels- with on that plexiglass, James, is do, do the sculptures need to be under plexi or is it just um, framed artworks? 
you know, it would probably depend on the materials. Um, yeah, it depends on the materials, uh, case by case. There's a question about labels with information about the artist. Yes, labels will be uh, supplied on the wall. Uh, there's a question about um, uh, if I'm applying in partnership with my KC Gallery, can I use their business insurance, business docs, et cetera. Um, that'll be a case by case basis also. Uh, you know, th there have been examples where uh, the contract is with uh, a representative and then the artist works as a subcontractor to that representative. And so um, we're willing to explore that. I'm sh not sure that I can give a solid answer right now. Uh, will all of the sleek tile walls behind the artwork be gray? Yes, they are uniform. One other question, are there seams in the wall or are the walls completely flat? Those tiles, you can kind of see it here in the rendering. Um, I believe, I don't want to give the wrong uh, measurement. They're either five by 10. I think they're five by 10, not four by eight. So every five feet, there'll be a tile seam. Yeah. Here's a good one. Um, how high of resolution do images need to be for proposal phase? So here's a question too. So on, um, as the limits for call for entry um, require, the uploads can only be two megabytes. So that does really limit, um, you really need to make those files small. So um, just looking back, we've had over 1700 artists submit things for sculptures and everything else. They seem to figure out how to do that. So if you need um, a little bit more assistance with that, um, we can help. But also you can put links within your letter of interest. If there's something else that's a video link, for example, if you have digital work that you wanna show um, that may be a little too large to upload, you can also do that. But make sure you make that note in your letter of interest that we're not going all over the place looking at all these websites. You just make it really clear that that's where we need to go to view that work. There's, and when you upload a video to call for entry, the, the maximum size is larger to uh, account for video but they do have parameters. And also um, if you upload, it only allows one, uh, one page, but it can be a multi-page PDF if you have that all collated together. So there's a couple options and it may take a couple of tries. Um, if you have individual pieces that you wanna show, you may upload some within your portfolio as a singular oh. image, and then a little bit more description and maybe call outs in your proposal um, as the upload. So whatever seems to work best for your idea. Okay, here's a few more questions in chat. Um, can, let's see, what did this say? It said, um, can you submit, submit more than one proposal? I don't know that we've ever had that question. I, I don't know if we've addressed that question. Well, we can only select one artist per wall. So I guess you're, you're in competition with yourself then. So I guess I would wanna make sure you're splitting your time accurately or appropriately to putting time and energy and effort in creating a full finished proposal um, for a, one of those locations. If you did that twice, you're, you're competing with yourself again. So say you have a proposal idea that it could be arranged, say you have three pieces, I don't know. It could be arranged in this format or it could be arranged in this format and maybe you change those around. I wouldn't consider that two separate proposals. I just think that would be options within one proposal if that answers that question. Or are you talking about like two completely different ideas? Uh, there's a, a, a request to share the uh, color of the gray. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, can, in, is there a way to do that in an accurate sort of fashion? I think it's the, um, the we do to... have material samples for everything in here, and I know there's a page here. I believe. Oops. Um, I'm not sure if this was that sample here, but I can get a picture of those tiles for you as well. We have a materials room with all the samples for all the different um, wood finishes, the floor finishes, everything that's going to go in the new terminal. So let me make a note to myself. Okay. 
is there an option to print image on aluminum and bolt it instead of using rails? Um, we probably would not seek the bolt to the ceramic tile, no. I mean, a work on aluminum would probably still, we'd have to come up with some kind of hanging system for it. Uh, we, we just can't, we can't penetrate the ceramic tiles. Uh, let's see, other questions. Uh, with a two megabyte uh, limitation, an installation view of the artwork submitted wall would be too small. Well, that's something you'll have to experiment with. So if you're, if you're imagining like a mock-up of your, uh, your work uh, with a gray background, you know, if you can get the accurate color of the gray, that might be helpful. Um, is there any theme for these artworks or is it an open call with any ideas? I mean, that's up to you as the artist, right? Uh, and I think one of the key things to remember there, again, is that this is not, uh, this is not a, an art specific location. It's not a museum, it's not a gallery. So people from all walks of life with all uh, types of backgrounds and looking at and appreciating contemporary art will be walking through here. And so, you know, if, if your work is, you know, challenging even for an art specific venue, then, you know, it, it would probably be extra challenging for this type of venue. Um, yeah, so th there are more questions about the specs for the gray holly. So if you can come up with something about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we do have three more info sessions. So as we move through these, we're going to get more information also. And again, all of these will be recorded and all of them will be posted on buildkci.com slash art. Um, and, and all of these FAQs also will be answered and in writing also. So we can go back and refer to those. Here's another one about um, submitting for two corresponding locations. What do you mean corresponding? Uh, you know, well, it's like maybe two walls that are facing each other, I'm gathering. So, and the question is, is that an option or is it 19 artists regardless? Yes. So remember that the Municipal Art Commission has said diversity, equity, and inclusion is an important part of this. I suspect that the selection panels are not going to react too well to artists making a proposal for more than one area because we've already said that diversity is, is one of the selection criteria. So it's not specifically prohibited. I would say it's probably not going to go over all that well. And also these areas are further away from each other than you think. So like this red wall versus this red wall, there's so many things in between there, chairs, desks, um, charging stations, there'll be so many things. It would be pretty difficult to have this piece speak all the way across um, different gates in the concourse to be related to the piece on the other side as well. So I think that would be a challenge in itself. Okay, any last moment things, um, Jessica or Marissa? I don't see anything. I don't have, there's um, one question here. If we make work on our irregular shaped canvas, do we need a frame and plexiglass if the work can be sealed? So it's kind of getting into the detail. Yeah, not necessarily. Say you do something that's thin, that's like a glazed tile or something. I mean, if it's durable enough, and that's one of the criteria in there is durability. So if the materials that you use have that durability factor, then you wouldn't need uh, additional. Um, safety measures over it. And here's a question about specifying concourse A or B. No, you do not need to specify concourse A or B. The, the, all of the walls have been standardized. That's why we picked this 40 by 20 space. There are a few little options like power and data. You know, there's an option for, you know, heavier, uh, more backed walls. Um, some of the walls have, uh, automatic defibr defibrillators, you know. Um, some of them have um, fire extinguishers. Oh, there are various types of things. Yeah, yeah various types of things that appear on the walls. 
what we did is we, we chose this four by 20 area so that all of those things will be outside of the art exhibition area. Uh, so if there's a fire extinguisher or a defibrillator, those are gonna be on the margins of the wall, not in the artwork area. And so the, the, the areas really are very equivalent. And so there's no reason for an artist to specify concourse A or concourse B, we'll, we'll make that decision. Okay, well, this has been a whirlwind and uh, lots of good questions, thank you. Yeah, this has been great guys. And just a reminder, we are recording it. So we'll post it to our YouTube page and then also it'll be on the build uh, KCI slash art website, our website page. So you can access this again and definitely attend their other information sessions that are coming up over the next couple of weeks. Um, and just keep in touch. Their emails were there at the bottom of the agenda. So if you have like very specific questions to your proposal idea, you might wanna get those questions in sooner than later. Um, don't wait to the last minute. And um, yeah, thanks again to Holly and James for partnering with us on this. This was such a wonderful treat and great opportunity for people to ask questions directly to you guys. So we really appreciate it. Well, thank you. I appreciate so many artists joining us this morning. And I know we'll have more questions coming um, up over the next couple of weeks as you're working through your proposals. No rush to send everything in on call for entry. It's due June 18th. Don't wait till the last day though, but definitely give yourself time to think through it. Um, show someone else like, hey, does this make sense? Am I missing something? We've really outlined all those things that we're looking for that we need included in that proposal. So just make sure you're, you're including all of those things. And then your proposal will be really complete and really help the selection panel understand your vision, understand your process and who you are as an artist. So. And I just saw one last question. Are there renderings of the types of hanging fixtures being used? No, we, we don't have any, we haven't actually selected the, the hanging uh, picture rail yet, but it's going to be similar to, to those types of rails that you see in museums and galleries and other collecting institutions around the city. So while you all are working on your proposals, we have a lot of things behind the scenes that we're handling as well. So we'll be working on um, finalizing who the selection panel is. Also, as James said, we'll be working on getting that picture rail system um, figured out. So yeah, there's so many moving parts. We kind of have to do it in a, a certain order. Also to fall in line with the design build schedule of everything else that's going on around those spaces. All so right, well, thank from... you all. Perfect. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.